And now joining us in the studio from Nerdist, it's Matt Myra. Hey, welcome. Yes, and via Google Plus Hangout, we've got Bill Nye, the science guy. Woo! Bill, you made headlines this year for your outspoken take on science education and teaching kids about evolution. So what kind of feedback did you get about this? I know it was kind of a bit of a controversy. You were everywhere on, on, in the news for it. But what has happened since on that? Well, people ask me about it all the time. Most people are very supportive. Yeah. Uh, most people think it's okay, but there are a lot of people who uh, equate this controversy with uh, something about their religion. And I emphasize, I'm not going after, I'm not concerned with anybody's religion. Just the earth is not 6,000 years old. It's not 10,000 years old. And so we, it is inappropriate to use tax dollars intended for science education to uh, teach creationism as an alternative to the to reality or whatever. I, I need to uh, go back to some stuff going on right now. Climate change, especially post-Hurricane Sandy. I know you have been very outspoken about this, about that we need to fix this problem. Is, is this going to be what it takes now to fix it? Are we now more aware that there's an issue well, I think people, yeah, I think Sandy has the potential to have politically, to have a bigger effect than Katrina. And by, because it hit the north, the northeast. You know, you could live, you could live in, in Xi'an, China, and you were affected by Sandy because the stock market shut down. And this is just, I'll claim, this is not an extraordinary claim, but this, this is just beginning. I mean, I'm not saying there's going to be Sandy every weekend or every year. But every decade, we can expect more and more stronger storms, more destructive, and expect them also to have this unusual path, or formerly unusual path. Let me just throw out a couple of crazy ideas. Maybe we should put the power lines in a less vulnerable place, like underground. And then maybe that we should have a lot of uh, money, renewable Bill. energy and so we don't have to depend on foreign oil. These are all public works. And so the last election, last week, was really, I mean, this is not, I mean, I'm not saying anything I haven't said before. It's a step in the right direction. If the other side had been elected again, it would have been, the United States would have had a very difficult time leading the world in these new technologies that we need uh, for the betterment of all humankind. Um, what do you think of YouTube as an educational uh, resource? Like, can people learn from funny three-minute videos? You can absolutely learn from funny three-minute videos. It's how I have made my living for a while. <laughs> I, I emphasize that with the uh, ubiquity of the internet, there's a lot of things on YouTube, for YouTube being but one example, that aren't right or true. You can't take cell phones and pop popcorn. You can't shoot a guy <laughs> across a huge canyon into a pool and then have him pop up. Everything's fine. Mm, it's yeah. like there's stuff on YouTube that's not right, which is, is good from a science education standpoint because it, it encourages what we call critical thinking. Don't believe everything you see or hear. But then there's some things that are quite worthy and believable and wonderful and happy. This year has been, I think, so big for, you know, not oh, big man. for... Curiosity Rover, everybody. Well, yeah, cur but, it, but bringing a lot of people together. To, if that rover drives up to some rock layer on the planet Mars, and for this represents a rock layer. Visual aids, <laughs> I love it. And finds evidence of living things. These would be some sort of fossil uh, microbe, Martian microbe. It would, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> it, would mean, it would be like Copernicus showing that the Earth is going around the sun instead of the other way around, or Galileo showing that we're not the only planet with a moon. What about the stratus jump? Everything. What about the stratus jump? How did that change the world? I mean, bear in mind that that was done in 1962 uh, with a, perhaps a, a less graceful landing. I got a lot of uh, tweet questions, by the way, about that. Uh, why don't they? Why don't the astronauts just re-enter that way? The reason is your astronauts in orbit are uh, going 17,000 miles an hour over the Earth's surface. A guy falling from outer, from nearly outer space is not moving at all, or hardly at all, relative to the Earth's surface. So he's just got this, just going straight down, not going this plus this. What? 
So that's why you need heat shields and titanium and ceramic tiles and all these other so, cool things. <laughs> use Twitter a lot and thing. you and use YouTube. Like how are you using YouTube and Twitter to connect with audiences and, and share the message and spread the word? Well, uh, you know, I just signed a deal with our good friends at Nervous. Oh, so thank are, you, Bill. We're going to take over the world. I <laughs> yeah, that's and this the plan. Is, this is where we start right here. Yes, am I right, people? Can yeah, I nerd it. <laughs> Bill, I want to thank you so much for helping us take one step forward in this journey with you today. It's I been a blast. I being back on the show. Yes, and ca Carry having you in you studio. Guys, let's change the world. Yes, let's change the world together. Check him out at BillNye.com or follow him on Twitter at The Science Guy.